O heavenly King, comfort us, Spirit of truth, present everywhere, filling all things. Treasure blessings and the giver of life. Come to dwell in us, cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls a good one. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards all people. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards all people. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, the stability of the holy churches of God and the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for those who enter with faith, reverence and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For our Archbishop Macarius, the Honourable Priesthood, the Diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our country, Australia, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, for all its civil authorities, all its people, and for those who serve in its armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city and country, and the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather, the abundance of the fruits of the earth, and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who are travelling by land, sea or air, the sick, the suffering, for captives and the safety of them all, let us pray to the Lord. deliverance from all affliction, anger, danger and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our holy most blessed, glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. I 
again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. For yours is the dominion, and yours is the kingdom, and the power and the glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Praise the Lord, O my soul, I will pray, I will praise the Lord in my life. I will sing to my God while I have my being. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Save us, Son of God, who rose from the dead. We sing to you, Hallelujah. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Sion, to generation after generation. Save us, Son of God, who rose from the dead. We sing to you, Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now. Son and Word of God, you who are immortal, and consented for our salvation to be incarnate of the power of the cross and of the Virgin Mary, with love change becoming human, and who were Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we offer glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Yeah. 
commander of the heavenly host, we who are unworthy beseech you, for your presence compass us beneath the wings of your immaterial glory and faithfully preserve us who fall down and cry out to you. Deliver us from all harm, for you are the commanders of the powers on high. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. For you are God, are holy, and to you we offer glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages.
again with fervor dynamis. Holy God, O Lord, your work shall be magnified greatly. You made all things in wisdom. Let us attend. Bless the Lord, O my soul, soul, O Lord, my God. You are magnified exceedingly. Wisdom. The reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brethren, be watchful, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. Now, brethren, you know that the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Achaia, and they have devoted themselves to the service of the saints. I urge you to be subject to such men and to every fellow worker and laborer. I rejoice at the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaikos because they have made up for your absence. For they refreshed my spirit as well as yours. Give recognition to such men. The churches of Asia, of Asia send greetings. Aquila and Prisca, together with the church in their house, send you hearty greetings in the Lord. All the brethren send greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. If anyone has no love for the Lord, let him be accursed. Our Lord, come. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with you all, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Stretch your bow and grant prosperity and reign because of truth, gentleness and righteousness. You loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore God, your God, anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. According to St. Matthew, let us attend.
The Lord said this parable. There was a householder who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to tenants and went into another country. When the season of fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another and stoned another. And again he sent out servants more than the first and they did the same to them. Afterward he sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? This was the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our Son and of the Holy Spirit. We come today to the 13th Sunday of Matthew and the familiar reading about the Lord's parable of the vine dressers. And this is really one of many parables that we find in St. Matthew's Gospel. And it's in, in this Gospel where we hear the message of about a king or a master or a landowner attempting to settle accounts with his workers. And in all of them, the master of the parable is looking really to get what is due to him, you know, what is, what is his right that he should receive. And so the master in the parable is not really portrayed as someone who is unfair or even someone who is overbearing or sort of has some sort of wrath, but really he just wants to get what is rightly his and what is due to him. And in the parable that we just heard read, we see how the landowner enters into an agreement with some workers who are basically leasing uh, his land to gain some profit for their labour. However, when the landowner attempts to get what is rightfully his, the workers we hear in the story abuse and kill the landowner's servants and amazingly, Amazingly, the landowner shows no sign of sort of anger or wrath for this rebellion that occurs. And first of all, he sends more servants, as we know, who are also abused and also murdered. And then in the end, he sends his own son, imagining, well, you know, there is no way the workers are going to do anything to him. They will respect him as well because he is the son. But we know that instead the workers basically murder the son under the total delusion that the inheritance will somehow uh, be theirs once the son is dead. So we need to note in this parable, though, that it's not Jesus who says that the landowner will come in sort of in this anger or wrath to destroy the rebellious workers. That is really the statement of those who are listening and who are there listening to Jesus. And the gospel really suggests to us that the answer is of those who oppose Jesus, because Jesus suggests to them, if you really think, you know, that God is wrathful, that God is sort of vengeful, that God is angerful, and he's going to destroy those who disobey him, 
uh, or kill his prophets, then why on earth aren't you following your own vision of God and repenting? And instead, we hear Christ's opponents really are plotting to kill him, even though they believe God is somehow vengeful and wrathful and angered towards those who disobey him and maltreat his servants. And so Jesus is challenging them, you know, are you really willing to deny? Are you really willing to deny that I am serving God? And it's a question that they, you know, fear, they loathe to answer, really, because they know that the masses believe in Jesus' miracles and his teachings, and all of that is a clear sign that he really is from God. Now, we see a similar image of God being portrayed as a sort of patient, merciful, um, uh, merciful person in the other parables in the Gospel of St. Matthew. Um, if you want to look up, you can look them up in um, Matthew chapter 13, 18, 20, about the, the, the parable of the man who sowed good seed, the parable of the unforgiving servant, the parable of the uh, labourers and the vineyard, even the king's wedding banquet, and the parables of the last judgment. But still in all of these, in all of these, the parables, if they are portraying God to us, do not give us um, the image of sinners who are in sort of somehow the hands of a really angry God. They don't portray uh, God as a God of anger or wrath who treats his subjects as he wishes just because he can and has power over them. But God, instead, in all of these parables, and that's a message for us, God is really full of mercy and he's patient and he gives everyone lots of time, plenty of opportunities to show, uh, them, show them mercy, no matter what they're doing. Lots of time being really forgiving, being really generous and being grateful and willing to do his will. And in the writings of the church fathers, we encounter a very clear idea that the difference between Christians and the difference between unbelievers is that we as Christians are supposed to focus on God. Our whole focus and our being and our centre is supposed to be orientated towards God in our daily lives. And as a consequence, we are then supposed to demonstrate our love for God. And we keep God before us at all times, no matter what. We keep God before us and we try and be faithful to him, please him and stick to him. And it really is, as the fathers say, and we know through our day-to-day -day life, that when we take our eyes off God, uh, when we look at the world or what others are doing, well then we start to behave, unfortunately, like unbelievers. And there was an interesting writing in the 4th century by a monastic a patristic author, author um, who is now known as a pseudo-Macarius. There's a technical reason for that, but don't worry about that. We can talk about that some other time. But he uses clear imagery about what he thinks non-believers are like. He says... In his, this writing, he said that those who don't focus on God and don't put God as the centre and aren't sort of concerned with looking to him and pleasing to him are a bit like flour that's put in this really big giant sieve and it can just be shaken and tossed all about. And he says that when we don't have God as our centre, when we don't have God as our focus, then we are easily become shaken we easily become shaken by whatever is happening around us in the world. And just think about it. I probably don't need to remind you now. You know, many, many of us, some sadly, but many in the world are always forever checking their cell phones. They go to bed and check their cell phone. They wake up and check their phones, the computers, the, the, the news to hear what's happening, the latest sort of scandal or what's, what's going on. And unfortunately, we're all stuck in the coronavirus at the moment. And then... That's what we're doing. We're focusing on that. Instead of, you know, really, you know, thinking uh, uh, to put our eyes on God. And then, and then we get sort of overwhelmed. We need to be informed. I'm not saying we don't be informed and that's all good. But if you're sort of attracted to that and you can't wait to hear what sort of trash is being dug up, you know, or you get totally upset, um, you know, by what you're hearing, and then you can get really riled and your spirit 
can be affected by every little bit of single news, and that's exactly like being shaken and tossed about by the news of the world, just like it was said in Pseudo Macarius. And that's how, unfortunately, the enemy works with us, that you know, he constantly wants to rile us and take our focus and distract us and upset us by what's going on so that we really don't pay attention to God. C.S. Lewis's whole book, The Screwtape Letters, uh, was very masterfully put about that as well. Now, we as believers and followers of Christ, of God, um, we see the same world ar around us just like everybody else does, uh, including whether you're a believer or a non-believer. But the difference is that as Christians, when we have faith as baptised in Christ, we are, we are sort of engulfed, we are permeated, we are covered by the peace of Christ and also by the love of the Holy Spirit that's given to us. And therefore, our aim is to try to live as if, as if we have already somehow passed from death to life, as it says in John chapter 5, and so that we really try to not be distracted by the smallest about of every little bit of news that comes out, that, you know, that we're not tossed around like flour in a sieve, unable to focus and have our gaze on God because we allow ourselves to be distracted by everything around us. Even the epistle that we heard read today, that Manu read from Corinthians, we also hear that from St. Paul because he says, brothers and sisters, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, and let all that you do be done with love. And so we are to be vigilant. We're encouraged about that. We are encouraged to be vigilant and to have our eyes, our gaze, our focus on God. And that would allow us to stand firm in faith and not to be tossed about by every single distraction. Then we have to be courageous and we have to be strong to do God's will rather than allowing ourselves to be moved by every little distraction which captures our attention or upsets us. You know, to sort of, there's the expression of sort of toughening up a bit sometimes. And that's what St. Paul is telling all of us really in one way, to toughen up because really he combines the thought with the words. You know, let all that you do be done with love because we don't always associate courage with love, okay? And it takes courage. It really takes courage to hold on to one's moral values. It takes courage to also, and strength to love God and even to love our neighbour despite all the bad news and all the bad stuff that we're hearing. And it takes courage and strength also to stand against the world and even our own mind at times, which says, you know, to us what to do uh, in opposition to, uh, and, 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 and to opposition what Christ tells us to do, which is to love your enemies. I mean, that's crazy sometimes if you think about it. So it takes courage and strength in today's world to do what Christ tells us, you know, even at the last judgment, to feed the hungry, to, to welcome the homeless, you know, to shelter them, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and to see those in prison. So may God help us to have courage, may God help us to have love and may we totally be focused on Christ's gaze in whatever state we're in uh, so that we may gradually, step by step, uh, be the people and the persons that he wants us to be. God bless you, and Christ's love and peace be with you all. Amen. Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we ask you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God. According to your great mercy, we ask you, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Archbishop Macarius. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, pardon and forgiveness of sins for the servants of God, all pious and orthodox Christians who live in or visit this city and for all those who worship in this holy church. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever-memorable founders 
of this holy church and for all our pious and orthodox brothers and sisters who've gone to their rest before us and lie asleep here and in all the world. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we offer glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Catechumens, pray to the Lord. Let us, the believers, pray for the catechumens, that the Lord may have mercy on them, that he may instruct them in the word of truth, that he may reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that he may unite them with his holy Catholic and apostolic church. Save them, have mercy on them, help them, protect them, O God, by your grace. Catechumens, bow your heads to the Lord, that they also with us may glorify your all honoured and majestic name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Those who believe us again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom, for to you belong all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom, that always protected by your power, we may offer you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages.
little Joseph. When he had taken down, he almost put a body in the tree. laid it in a new tomb. The Lord God, remember all of us in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. For the precious gifts presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, anger, danger and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. That this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, the guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. For pardon and forgiveness of our sins and offences, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. For that which is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. That we may complete the remainder of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. That the end of our life may be Christian, painless, unashamed, and peaceful, and for a good defense at the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, o Lord. Commemorating, O holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Through the compassion of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your all-holy good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Peace be with you. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess. Father, I love you, Lord, my strength, Lord, my strong, my fortress, and my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength, Lord, my strong, my fortress, and my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength, Lord, my strong, my fortress, my deliverer. The doors, the doors, in wisdom let us attend. We can say it all together. I believe, I believe in one, one God, God, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, and, and of all things visible and invisible, and, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten, begotten Son of God, begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became human, and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and rose on the third day according to the Scriptures, and descended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who spoke through the prophets, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand with fear, let us attend that we may make the holy offering in peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give It is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, to praise you, to give thanks to you, to worship you in every place of your dominion. For you are God, inexpressible, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, ever the same, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You brought us from non-being into being, and when we fell, you raised us up again and left nothing undone until you brought us up to heaven and bestowed on us your kingdom to come. For all these things we give thanks to you and to your only begotten Son and to your Holy Spirit and for all the benefits known and unknown, seen and unseen that have been granted to us. We give thanks to you also for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. The thousands of archangels and myriads of angels attend you, the cherubim, the seraphim, six-winged mini-eyed, soaring aloft on their wings, singing the victory hymn exclaiming, crying out, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, our say, Holy are you, and then holy you, and your only begotten Son, and your Holy Spirit, holy are you, and all holy and majestic is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everybody who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled all the divine plan for us, and on the night he was given up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Remembering then this commandment of the Saviour and all that has been done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascent into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second and glorious coming again. Your own, from your own, we offer you. In 
in every way and for everything. Again, we offer you this spiritual and bloodless act of worship. And we ask you, and we entreat you, and we implore you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that to those who partake of them, maybe for the vigilance of soul, for the forgiveness of sins, for communion with your Holy Spirit, for the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness before you, not for judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you this spiritual act of worship for those who have gone to their rest in faith. Forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous spirit perfected in faith, especially for our holy, pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, the fair of us and ever Virgin Mary. Among the first, remember, Lord, our Archbishop Macarius, and grant to your holy churches that he remain in peace, safety, honour, health and length of days, rightly teaching the word of your truth, and those that each of us has in mind, and all men and all women. Remember, O Lord, the city in which we live in every city and country, and the faithful who live in them. Remember, O Lord, those who are travelling by land, sea or air, the sick, the suffering, the captives, and the safety of them all. Remember, O Lord, those who bear fruit and nurture the soil in your holy churches, and who remember the poor and send your mercies upon us all. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise your all honoured majestic name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of the ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, be with you all. And with your spirit. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts presented and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our loving God, who has received them on his holy, heavenly and spiritual altar as a sweet-smelling spiritual fragrance, may send down to us in return divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God.
and make us worthy master that we may with boldness and without condemnation dare to call upon you the heavenly God as father and say all together the our father our, our father, father in heaven hallowed be your name, name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done as, it as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory father son and holy spirit now and ever into the ages of ages peace be with Let us bow our heads to the Lord. To you, o Lord. Through the grace and compassion and loving kindness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your all holy good and life giving Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Hear us, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from your holy dwelling place and from the throne of the glory of your kingdom, and come to sanctify us, you who sit above with the Father and are here present with us unseen, and by your mighty hand be pleased to share your pure body and precious blood with us and through us with all the people. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. Let us attend the holy gifts for the holy ones. God is broken and distributed. Broken, you're not divided. Ever eaten, yet never expanded, but sanctifying those who partake thereof. Jesus Christ conquers. Jesus Christos Nika. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. Blessed is the heat of your holy things, always, now, and ever, to the ages.
believe. I believe, Lord, and I confess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is indeed your pure body, and this is indeed your precious blood. I ask you, therefore, have mercy on me and forgive me my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, in knowledge and in ignorance, and make me worthy, uncondemned, to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Amen. Behold, I approach for holy communion. Maker, burn me not as I partake. For you are fire burning the unworthy, but cleanse me from every impurity. Of your mystical supper, Son of God, receive me today as a partaker. For I will not speak of the mystery to your enemies. I will not kiss you as did Judas. But as the thief do I confess you, remember me, Lord, in your kingdom. Tremble, mortal, as you behold the deifying blood. For it is a burning coal consuming the unworthy. The body of God both deifies and nourishes me. It deifies the spirit and wondrously nourishes the mind. You have smitten me with yearning Christ and by your divine love you have changed me. But consume my sins with immaterial fire and make me worthy to be filled with delight in you, that leaping for joy, gracious one, I may magnify your first and second comings. Into the splendour of your saints how shall I, the, the unworthy one, enter? For if I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing betrays me. For it is not a wedding garment, and I shall be bound and cast out by the angels. Cleanse the defilement of my soul, Lord, and save me in your loving kindness. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to me for judgment through my unworthiness but for the purification and sanctification of both soul and body, and as a pledge of the life and the kingdom to come. For it is good for me to cling to God and to place in the Lord the hope of my salvation. Of your mystical supper, Son of God, receive me today as a partaker, for I will not speak of the mystery to your enemies, I will not kiss you as did Judas, but as the thief do I confess you, Remember me, Lord, in your kingdom. With the fear of God and with faith and love draw Save, O God, your people and bless your inheritance. of Attend, having partaken the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly, life-giving, also mysteries of Christ, let us give proper thanks to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Have 
Having asked that this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful and sinless, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and to you we offer glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, who bless those who bless you and sanctify those who put their trust in you, save your people, bless your inheritance, protect the whole body of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, glorify them in return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who put our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the priests, to those in authority, and to all your people. For every good act of giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights, and to you we offer glory and thanks and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord come upon you through his grace and loving kindness always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Holy Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead through the intercessions of his all-pure, blameless and holy mother, through the power of the precious and life-giving cross, through the protection of the honoured bodiless powers of heaven, through the supplications of the honoured, glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, of the holy, glorious and praiseworthy apostles, of the holy, glorious and triumphant martyrs, of our God-bearing fathers and mothers, of our father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, the Saint Paraskeva, the great martyr, the patron of our community, of the holy, righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and particularly of the holy archangel Michael, whose commemoration of the miracle brought by him at Colasse, we remember this day in the holy martyr, Caldat, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and a loving God. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Uh, where is our...